So welcome everybody. I'm really happy to be here. I'm really excited already from what I heard already this morning, also yesterday maybe, but um, also in between and the breaks and so on. So already I feel like there's so many pieces of puzzles which fit together and none of them like doubled. And I really like feel like collecting them today. And yeah, I really like how uh, as well Will now got you all, got a, you know, a little bit after the lunch back on, you know, <laughs> being more vivid. Um, we call it in German soup coma. I don't know how you call it afterwards. <laughs> okay, so really um, also as everyone, I'm excited to be here on site. And um, yeah, so I was asked by JP whether I want to join. And uh, I guess when he said like at London, this is when I said yes right away. And well, yeah, it was only then that I knew okay, there must be something to it, right? What's the catch? Mm. And realized, okay, you have to give a talk first um, before you can go to see Buckingham, Buckingham Palace. So, okay, um, then I said, okay, I have to do it, right? So already I saw a little bit of London yesterday and now I have to do, deliver the talk. <laughs> okay, he said then, seriously, he said like what uh, I should talk about is just, you know, anything I'm passionate about, uh, putting a little bit of pressure on me, like, okay, usually you, you hand in papers and you think about a topic and then you're like, okay, do, you, they, do they like my topic or so? And now he said, like, I can just talk about anything. Like, okay, what is the core of what I'm passionate about? So what is it when, when I start talking about it, like my, like my eyes will start um, to, um, yeah, to glow or whatever. <laughs> Um, and yeah, and more of it is like, okay, I like to talk about things which help me as well, which I think I want to talk about so I can give it to someone else. Maybe it's some nice trigger, some nice learning, some nice ideas I can give to someone else. So it's about game changers, right? So I was thinking about what is it, what is, has been game changing for me if I look like through my very long career, of course. Um, well, so this is how I came up actually with my title. <laughs> So it's all about the hidden, maybe hidden, opportunity that lies within structures. So it's about um, also like how we can with visualizing structures and working visually with that, bring on in our own HI, our own human intelligence to um, support us in understanding and support us in doing the change work we do. So um, as of every time, you know, there's some sort of problems and um, something like why I needed a game changer. So um, let's say our work, let's see how the clicker is doing now, um, is about bringing, talking about values, goals, scope, priorities, definition of customers, and also like definition of processes and next steps with people we work with. And there's always a section of, yeah, let's say love, right? So this is what we do as agile coaches, coaches, organizational developers, going to our clients and having workshops with them and discussing what you just see. So, but somehow I always felt like, okay, um, it does not stick that well. It is not sustainable. So how, how can we make it more sustainable? Although this creating this momentum is really important, I have to say, how can we bring it into a process, right? So um, my first game changer was like being a coach um, to learn about agile ways of working and learn about Scrum and becoming a Scrum master. So that gave me a structure, this Scrum framework, somehow that I could get in with a client, be there and uh, make the, like, the, the transfer from the workshop into the real day, like day-to-day -day business and helping them to facilitate the implementation to track um, how we would do with the next steps, basically what we um, aligned on. So this was the first game changer. Um, then the second game changer was that I did also a class on becoming a systemic organizational developer, giving me meta perspectives on organization and how to work with them. So um, you can see here one of the models of Glasel, and I really like his models. That's why I brought them, obviously, you know, about this, you know, glow in the eyes and so on, giving it to you. And that means um, this, for example, is a model of the seven uh, processes for change. And that helped me to... Um, you know, to think about what do we have to do if we want to do change? What things do we need to do? And, you know, how can we think about, okay, how do I want to plan this and so on? But not only this, it's also, it helped me already to make a better um, clarification with the client on what he ordered, right? It made me to work with the people 
to explain what we should do and also to use it like with different methods then to do something a little bit of a future design maybe and then something like with a learning process. So I did use it to, for example, even do workshops and, uh, you know, um, to plan them. And also to not forget for my own orientation and uh, coordination of my change work, to not get lo lost somewhere in this um, complex way of working, um, to not forget, forget any of the processes. But for example, at the client I'm at now, so um, I'm working in the SAFE framework at the moment as an RTE. I was brought in as an agile, agile coach, but there was no RTE, so I ended up being there. And what you see, you know, SAFE has thought like there's a lot of in that same frame, SAFE framework. And they came up with like this lot of knowledge and that's, you know, it's reasonable to do the implementation roadmap. It's a little bit like this actually, but you come into the organization, you find out they haven't done anything of it, right? So they just jumped right into the implementation and where do we do that? Usually we just go to the developer teams and tell them from now on you have to do PI plannings. Now from now on we want to see this here and there and there. So that means kind of we already missed part of all the processes here. And coming in, of course, you try to then find out what is best, how to help best, um, and to see, okay, what do I see here? It's very important as well to, for taking the models to diagnose, to understand what we see, what we learn about the organization. So I really like as well his second model. So if this is more about the change process, the first one, this one now is like, you know, if you cut an orange in half, you can see the structure within the orange. So this is really like a second model, a holistic system model, looking at an organization like this orange, and meaning like um, you have different parts of an elements of an organization you have to work with and you have to think of. So um, you have to go for um, a strategy. Um, so the cultural um, layer is the upper one. So you go for strategy and identity maybe. You also have to work for the second part, the second layer. It's all this about um, people and so it's a um, social layer. Um, so for structures, people and functions. And also you should not forget even your physical layer. So about physical means you need to really, for example, imp implement a new strategy. So exact same client, they want to become a um, software company now, now from one on as well. Um, so they do all the strategy, you know, they bring in very good developers and whatever. And then you have a PI planning only to be at a branch of the company where other ones coming from other branches. So they, they are sort of external ones to that place, the physical place. And we'll have a week, not a whole week, but you know, um, of PI planning and they have a restriction on the open Wi-Fi. So we end up having all our mobile phones with a hotspot and trying to be like a software developing modern company, right? So I think that explains it quite well, how we have to really look at um, including everything in our change work and looking for everything meticulously. So this was the second game journal. So that's a strong mean for me already and I use it all the time um, to you know, do small retros with myself as well to see like where I'm heading off. You know, sometimes you get lost as I said. And then I had a third game changer and um, digging deeper into a Kanban and then finally becoming a flight level coach, um, I realized um, that it's giving me another lever, another means again to these questions. So that means, um, as you know, probably flight levels is working a lot with visualization, um, looking at work systems, looking at flight routes and on board patterns. And also what you can see here, you see like strategy coordination operation. So this is actually what it is about if we talk about flight levels. So the third level is the strategy one, upper one. The coordination is the second one and the operation is the first one. That means it's not about building a hierarchy of one board to another, it's building a hierarchy of one sense of another. Meaning, even as a single person uh, having a small company, I might be just me, I need also to think about my strategy, how to coordinate my tasks and how to operate. It doesn't matter if I'm small or big and um, how many teams I have or so. So meaning, Working with this uh, model for me also helped me to, to think in structures again as a, like a thinking model and um, yeah, to, to support the goals we um, can use that to not only diagnose where are we and to understand the work system for, for example and how work flows through the organization also in sense of altitude if we look for flight routes um, but also to use it to come to that moment of decision where we can say okay and now what do we want want what is what we want to achieve so which goal do we want to set to then manipulate the system 
at hand into that direction to support our goals. In means of how can I change the work system maybe? So if I've learned something about it, I might want to change something of how the teams are talking to each other, how I set up boards, for example, and uh, where I do set them up and also how I set them up. But my question here was really then, okay, I, I can see that it's really working for me. I, I realize how important all these different ways of structuring my thinking and also working with the clients and structuring their work and maybe even their company. So I realized it's so important for me, all this topic about structures, but I was like, okay, so, but why does it work that well? Why does it make such a difference if I really set up a work system differently, if I set up a board pattern differently, why has it an impact? What does it have to do with our brain and make such a difference? Okay, so let's start from the starting point. Um, actually, I'm giving you already an interpretation of that um, graphical structure, which you see here now, means that is a starting point or could mean also like a focus point or a gender topic or so. So I guess you had some association right away as well with that structure. Come to the next one. You might happen to have an association, I guess. So this, for example, could be then now, of course, like accordingly three topic points. And it could be also like three people just with a big hat, right? So it's not only for the joke, but it's really, you know, we see that structure and we can give different meanings to them. Um, some of them are easy, so we will have according, you know, very even same, same interpretations of that one. Some of them are not. But if I tell you about the hats, you know, your brain is switching to a different meaning you can give to some dots. So that brings in what is happening here. That brings in that we see a graphical structure, we see a structure, and it's only because we see that structure and we've learned to give a meaning to it that we interpret it in a metaphoric way. So again, if I follow up with this little game here with the patterns, if I change it from vertical to horizontal, I guess it's not the same for you anymore, right? Does it have the same meaning for you? So for me, it's maybe for you as well. It's a little bit like, okay, there's something here, there's something here. That means there seems to be like a, link, a left and a right one or like two positions or something like this. Could be like this. Or some of you might have had an association like bringing in some consciously already uh, another structure not yet introduced, and that is a line. So a line, of course, could be something connecting something like this. So if I have a starting point now, I have connection to maybe an end point. That is something showing us uh, like a metaphor for showing us something like starting something, ending something, and something in between. Could be a process or a time or whatever. Again, what happens if I show you this? Now I'm just adding a little different thing again. Still using just dots and lines. So for me, that is right away a system somehow, right? It's not a line anymore, it's a system. So it connects three dots to something which is a system or it could be like teams to each other, people to each other, even organizations to each other. So that is already about, you understand right away what it is. But if I would like, uh, if I look at a company or teams or people in reality, and would try to, to work visually with, with uh, how they see each other to each other. And I, I would make them map how they see really the structure. Um, it could look like that. So that means they would come up in the workshop maybe with like showing it, I, this is more like this, you know. So everything then in isosceles triangle. And right away, I guess you as I, when I look at it, we understand, okay, there might be some imbalance in that one. So it could be imbalance of interactions, of communications. It could be even love, right? <laughs> what? Um, so looking at that, um, we already have the feeling right away, okay, there is something we might want to change. And it's because we know right away by seeing that pattern, we give that meaning to it. It's because that's what is happening with our brain. We take in a, um, that graphical stimulus and our layer, lower la levels, um, layers, sorry, of our visual cortex knows like what it is, you know, that's a dot, that's a line, and now it's a triangle. It's only that our higher level, um, our higher layers of our visual cortex is giving a meaning to it. And that makes that we can also not just understand something with that, but we can also use it to then change it to what understanding I want to give to that one. So 
just changing the small um, um, mini, mini network, mini system here with a group of people in my workshop, we can add up, end up saying like, okay, let's do it like this. So it should be like people or teams should be more closer together, like more equally maybe, um, that's like this. But actually, if we look at companies, what we find is uh, most of the times is that they map it like this. And that means we are missing quite a bit of information here. So we are sort of blind if we come back to the last one we had. We are blind if we see just this. And if I would go on with my change work now, using this, I would quite miss the point, right? So I come back to, again, one pattern here. So I hope you have some association, because if you don't have, well, I come back to that in the next slide. This is for me something, okay, separating one from another. So it could be steps or so. Of course, if you know Kanban or Scrum and you know boards, you could right away have an association to that as well. Meaning there's a process somehow steps to one each other. Could be also a fence to the neighbor and the dog of the neighbor, but yeah. And so we can see this, we can give an interpretation of that because we have learned in our past to see that and to give that interpretation because we had the stimuli. And only if we see it, we can give that meaning because we've learned it. Meaning that we also um, can take it in very fast and uh, our brain does not have to have a lot of activity to, to do that work because it has get used to it. Um, so we can also give even meanings and um, yeah, see something which is not there. So this is where very famous because um, you see something which is not there. You see something which is only partly there and this is because of our higher um, layer in the cortex is doing this, is adding the meaning even though the information is lacking. So first step, I can see an information, I can give a meaning, but I can even see only part of the information and still give that meaning. And the contrary, there has been a test with a kitten, so they had a small kitten and that would see just um, vertical lines from the beginning of the day one and that was never exposed to any horizontal lines. So they tested it and it seems like um, that kitten never had learned to see uh, horizontal lines um, and could never see and process it. So we really need to see something to learn that, to have built neurons in our brain to be able to process it and yeah, to get used to that and have also lower brain activity and uh, do something with that. This is why I guess you can read that takes a while. By the way, it takes a while. It means it, it's our brain has to like adapt to that and it, you know, it's some effort. But it says, okay, let our brain do the change work. So it's really like we want to do the work we do, but using the structures is by what I just explained, helping us to support our change work. So what you should do is like start with a starting point. Then you could Let's see how fast it goes. <laughs> okay, I have to click everything extra. Then map your system and really look for how it is in reality or how it is perceived from the group you're working with and how it is perceived for the question at stake because you can't map the system just for every question you can have. You really have to set a focus what you want to look at, right? And then um, define by that the borders of the system you're looking at. You want to look at the how the work is really flying through your um, system, also in sense of altitude. And then you want to use like um, the, the models, like some models, this ones or others, um, and do your work around your thinking structures. Also doing your work iteratively, of course. You want then to maybe um, map that and start changing, manipulating um, your system into something and like this. <laughs> And also, most importantly, you want to also bring it in into the structures which you use day to day. So, for example, I now have to use the cheat sheet because I don't, you know, ah, I can see it here. Sorry, that's fine. No, I like. So, also, if I bring it into that structures I'm using like from day to day, that means that, for example, if you see this structure, it could be like a real team or so, they would have swim lanes for every team member or so, and you want to have them really being working on one product, product taking the responsibility, just eliminate, for example, 
the structures, like the swimming structures, uh, swim lanes, um, to make them think uh, of one product and be responsible for everything. Then in the next step, it could also mean, like, if you have problems um, with, let me look, look for the second one. <laughs> you want to learn about um, the delays in your system, for example. Um, you make, might want to have a transparency on that one, make it explicit, and like make it explicit where you have the waiting times, for example. Then if you come in for the next one, for example, um, you want to um, have a look at and improve on, of course, on your quality or your throughput, you might want to add something like VIP, so work and process limits. So again, we just use all the time different structures at hand to, to yeah, incorporate it in our daily work. Also, for example, if you uh, want to see um, that you know, you want to have different workflows or different work transparent in your team. Um, you want to bring it maybe at one board like this. And also you make it explicit, like for which workflow you're using, which steps. So make it very clear and then uh, define it by that. Or for example, I mean, there's more of them. You want to have strategy coming into action, make it the first step of your process, connect it with your day-to-day -day processes on all your different layers like the flight levels, for example, doesn't have to be them, just connect it to it, add actions to them, and make them trackable um, in connection to your um, set objectives, which you kind of see like here, for example, in the three months period or so. So there can be at as many different uh, patterns as you have different companies, different products and goals, um, and it all depends on what you want to achieve. So go uh, to look for that. And it really means working visually with this, um, like having those different structures at hand, using these models, for example, structuring yourself, structuring others with that, and orient and diagnose with that. Um, coming up with what you want to see, what you want to do, don't forget any of the processes, for example, um, and then set the goal, what you want to do, um, try to improve. And of course, iteratively, because everything we, you learn is just the last state of failure and you will go on with learning bit by bit. Um, and that means if you will find um, a good system after a while, it might be not the good system for tomorrow anymore. So this is the way of really um, approaching something, approaching how to bring in, how to help, let, let us help um, by our brains to do that change work. And that means um, rolling out something like a structure you want to use. So it's not against rollout, it's for rollouts, but you want to learn first and diagnose first, set a focus point, get a grip on the real, real uh, pain points and challenges and real work systems. And you want to use that to then um, yeah, manipulate um, in different ways, maybe slow, maybe fast. And you really want to bring in by the auxiliary means of visualization your own HI to do that and yeah, let a brain do the work and let us uh, use the hidden opportunities of structures. There's one last bit to it and that is um, flight level simulations. <laughs> so as I'm a flight level coach, I was um, first thinking about maybe bringing the simulation on flight levels because it is really nice to see the structures working together. It's just something you have to experience. But with that, you can also build exactly the structures you've just seen now in black and white um, in a lab situation. You can build them and play with your teams maybe and see how it is connecting, how it does feel, what problems do you see, what can you change, and you know how can you learn in that lab situation already with that. Set it up ex explicitly for your company. So this is something you can do. And you can, of course, ask someone of us um, how we can do it. I guess that's it. Thank you very much. And I have how many minutes left? You've got six minutes. Six minutes. OK, there's six minutes. If there's any question or discussion point, I'm gladly taking that. Thank you. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> OK, anything? Uh, that looks like, you know, anything. <laughs> I told you you have to come up with some questions. Okay, you, you know where to find me. I'm happy uh, there. Thank you very much.
isn't someone a starting point and ask them to talk? Wow. That's no. scary. <laughs> starting point. If you've ever given someone that starting point and asked them to just draw draw what they're thinking, what's the strangest thing you've ever seen or the most surprising thing you've ever seen someone draw? Draw? Yeah. Um, I don't know why that was surprising. Actually, if you do that kind of work more often, I, it doesn't matter whether you visualize in that way or do that work, you know that there's um, similar pain points that you see in different companies. So it was maybe not that surprising. It was more surprising when I did it the first time with a bigger company, how uh, they started mapping in a small group together and I thought, you know, they know their system. And they really found out in this first uh, session, it was more about diagnosing the system. It was more for us to learn about the system to then better consult them. And actually, it was the best um, best clarification uh, talk I had with my client ever because they found out so much with each other already. Um, so it was so clear this was the starting point of change already. Um, um, so that was, for me, like astonishing. And then they also, you think, you know, they know why they have that problem of resources and they find out by just drawing this that, uh, okay, they tick this one ticket and they point like, we did it tomorrow. So we said, like, what, what is the typical work item? And then, you know, you start like, where would it bump against, you know, in your company? Where does it come in and so on? And then after a while, you know, we would do this and then it looks nicely. And then the second person goes like, yeah, but you know, in real like for that type of work, it does totally different thing. And they only really realized in that moment that they don't have a process for innovative, individual, individual, individualized, whatever, I don't do it now, um, <laughs> um, work type of item, uh, they did not have a process at all. And it would go all through the other work process resources. So they had constant fights. Yeah. So I guess this is it. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Okay, yeah, just come up with any questions after you processed everything, <laughs> even the coffee maybe. Thank you very much. <laughs>